All right. Isn't it quite cool that like you made these things? I know, little boxes, little, little boxes stories. of wonder. <laughs> Product placement. Love it. Should we try and imitate that pedal show? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Most creative pedal name ever to use my initials. It's never been done. Look. <laughs> All right. As I love the shirt that says Tuesday Talks. Okay. Tuesday. Tuesday I'll get you talks. I'll get you so good. <laughs> Hi, my name is Mary Spender and you are watching Tuesday Talks. And this is Joshua Heath Scott. Tuesday. 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 Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday Talks. We met at Boss's 40th anniversary party where the House of Vans, yeah. Yeah. Where you did a little collaboration with Boss. Just a yeah. small thing. Yeah. Um Yeah. So we met then and then I started seeing your face crop up on my recommended feed on YouTube. I'm and so, I started I'm watching so sorry vlogs. for that. No. No no no. I started watching the vlogs and I was like, Hey, do you remember me? I think we should collaborate on a vlog in some way right. or do a Tuesday talk or something and uh, luckily you were in London and now we are here yeah and I my my memory of you so I had been friends with Zane Carney for years uh -huh. Zane is playing at the event and then uh, you know then I see you you're up there playing and I walked over to you after and just gave you my email I was like hey like I really enjoyed your music and I was like I'll see I would love to send you a couple of puddles see what you think I didn't even know that you did YouTube or anything yeah. Did you know that? I well, I remember you doing yeah, that, yeah. but then I was so too totally. shy to actually email you. <laughs> I was like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what to. But now we're here. Anyway, we're here now. Yeah. Um. So my first question, other than the vlogs being great, and we can talk about that later. Thanks so much. That's how awesome. does how does one build a pedal company in the twenty first century? What year specifically? <laughs> no. Uh. So for me, I'm in my eleventh year, mm -hmm. and I think it's. I would say it's wildly different than when I started. So I started in like, uh, we think 2007. It wasn't, I never intended to do it. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's the part where like when you, when someone asks me, I'm always like, I never meant to do this. So mm -hmm. the starting even feels blurry. Uh, but so like 2007, for instance, there weren't a ton of people really. Mm -hmm. There were, but they were like me getting into it. Like now that I know Earthquaker or, or so and so, we'll all have these similar conversations where we're about 11, 12, 13 years old. Mm -hmm. And we were all kind of like thinking we were the only ones in, in the genre we were kind of in. We saw Robert Keeley, mm -hmm. Mike Fuller. I mean, Fulton was everywhere. And you saw like Analog Man. But yeah, so it was like a very different market. Uh, no Instagram at that time. <gasps> And some people I know. don't even know that. I, a time no, like no, that it's existed. it's wild. No Instagram. <laughs> I the original JHS format was a MySpace page with some. It's still out there somewhere with horrible demo My clips. MySpace still exists too, yeah. and it's yeah. And then Facebook was brand new, and mm -hmm. like everyone was thinking it was like dumb. Mm -hmm. So I remember running. I feel super edgy because I had a Twitter when it first came out and I ran my yeah. first Black Friday sale on the Black Friday of 2009. I decided while my wife was shopping, I'm walking around an apartment store with my, my new, newfangled smartphone and I said, I'm going to sell this pedal for $75 if you email me today. And that was like, that's how different, that's just setting a picture for like how weird that was. Yeah. So nowadays, though, I kind of don't envy anyone because it's like so many. There's so many pedal companies, uh, and that's a good thing. Like, there's nothing wrong with that because the technology and the information is more and more available. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot less to learn from in 2007, but now, like... Like, you could go start a cool pedal company, like, if Maybe you dug into it. Maybe you no, should. I'm not going to you do that. <laughs> That's the last thing I'm yeah. going to do. So, yeah. The I trust the experts, yeah. The pedal company thing specifically, um, I think it's like any other, it's not, but it is like any other business. You know, if you're going to start something, uh, we were having a talk earlier, you just got to do it. And I think, I think I got to a point where it was like, I was doing it for fun, and then I realized I could make a little extra cash. 
And then it became overwhelming to me, and I just committed in. And mm -hmm. I think it's one of those things, in hindsight, I look back, and it's like, you just, if, if you just do something, you're doing something. And, and, and it might work out, and it might not, but at least you tried. And, yeah, I was fortunate enough and super thankful to have people keep buying these pedals. I'm always like, who are, who's buying these pedals? So, yeah. Well, some of the people who are seen playing your pedals are quite extraordinary and um, we've already had a conversation about John Mayer, obviously, um, because he's a complete fan girl. But how does that make you feel when you sort of just become aware of some of these people using your stuff to create what they do? Yeah. That must it, be quite cool. It's the best feeling. Um, it It's the best feeling that I'm very cautious of because I, I, I want to... I want to do the things I do because I love them and I want to yeah. try to not need the validation of like that. You know, that's that weird artist feeling you get yeah, a little bit, definitely. but yeah. Oh, it's amazing to get the email from so-and-so or the text from the guy from, you know, he got his number, got my number from the other player and you find yourself, you know, I think I was telling you earlier, you know, meeting or setting with or like advising guitar heroes that I had when I was 16 years old sitting on the bed in the bedroom reading tablature, you know, yeah. like, yeah, it's surreal. And it's like, it's really fun. It's, it's a fun thing. And it's, uh, to me, I, I don't ever want to take it lightly mm -hmm. because it's cool to make these little metal boxes that everyone somehow finds like at themselves within. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. really fun. And that's a, that's the best feeling, you know. It's really awesome mm -hmm. when you have a hero that you look to, and music's so important to me, like deeply important, more than even guitar. Like just the aspect of music, what it has done for me my whole life, mm -hmm. um, and to to know that um, I get a little bitty interjection of myself into some of these stories, you know, Absolutely. that that becomes something bigger than even guitar. It's really yeah. fun, and. Uh, with the pedals comes the sort of iconic look that you've created and we we glossed over the subject a little bit earlier mm -hmm. but my instinct when I first saw them was just like oh they're just beautiful pedals I think I saw the Pink Panther first yeah, and it was yeah. like okay. pink and sparkly and obviously I was attracted to that um, but yeah the design element even just I just think that aesthetically yeah twin 12 you can it's not going to autofocus right now um, I just think that's clean, slick. There's only so much you can do with the design of a pedal, and yet it looks yeah. like a JHS pedal now. So how did that sort of element come yeah, about? Yeah, so, um, so I, you know, I started just, just the whole, you know, I want to build a pedal from scratch and kind of you get a hold of these enclosures. You yeah. can buy them, you know, they're yeah, easy yeah. to get. So you kind of get the circuit down or whatever. And it always immediately bothered me how I was going to label this stuff. Because then it, when I made the decision to, like, I want to do this, mm -hmm. I am, I'm really visual. And so it, like, it haunted me. Just, like, it needed to look really cool. And a lot of the early, like, you'll see, even on my vlog, I'll show them sometimes or whatever. Or you see them on Reverb, maybe, or eBay. You'll see, like, a Morning Glory with nothing on it. Mm -hmm. And you don't even, you know, it's like super weird. Um, some people think they look cool. It really annoys me. I hate the way they look. But I just, I didn't want to put a sticker. I didn't want to do like a Sharpie or a paint pen because I don't write well. And so I just decided like, I'm just going to like take, take a deep breath and just ship these with nothing on them. I just had to like move on. Mm -hmm. uh, and then eventually I was in like in the States. I don't know what it's called here, but it's like a craft store. Like, yeah. is that a similar thing? Like here? an art shop, yeah. Yeah, like an art shop. And I walked past this aisle, and it was full of these little rubber stamps that, like, in the States, like, elementary teachers would stamp the, you know, like a, they're grading a test, and it has, like, an apple, and it says, good job, or something. And there's just, like, trays of these. And I, um, I did kind of that thing where you're walking down the aisle, and you, like, double take. And mm -hmm. it, like, it was like a lightning bolt of, like, I could do stamps, maybe. Um... So I bought a bunch of these. I had the, at that time I had what's now the pulp and peel. It was in an orange case. Mm. I knew I wanted to name it that because it was, uh, it was, uh, from the lineage of the old orange squeezer. So orange squeezer, pulp and peel. I knew, and there was a little orange icon. And that was the first time I saw the moment of like, ah, it just felt so good to put that the sense. orange on there. Um, and then some time passed. I don't know how long, but. I had a new neighbor move into my neighborhood, 
and we like kind of met each other on the street, got to know each other, and in the conversation he says, well, I'm a graphic designer. And he said, I love Ding. a certain... <laughs> exactly. And then we start talking, and everything that I visually love and wanted to see but i didn't i don't have the skill to execute it and i wasn't uh-huh. even going to try uh-huh. that was his favorite form of art and so he's worked for me for eight years now and every icon is purposely built you know to serve the story of the box and a lot of times i will actually have this the icon or the name or the story and add the circuit to that which is kind of backwards yeah, but I think that's really interesting. I've had other pedal, pedal builders tell me how weird that feels. And to me, that's like, that feels so good. Uh, but yeah, just like like the Twin 12 is a funny one. You have the Twin 12 is from a, it's the sound of a silver tone, 1484. The original thought is a silver dollar, an American silver dollar silver tone. But the icon never worked so well, and the, the lady looked horrible the silver dollar lady Mm -hmm. so we ended up statue of liberty so even though that doesn't properly reflect it there's a story so like every pedal has this weird it's like nerdy useless information but yeah no that's very very cool yeah yeah yeah. so it it was going to be a silver dollar but it like the lady looked horrible because when you do two dimension like it's really hard sometimes to make something cool out of a flat one color icon yeah, so that's. But I also think it means that they won't, that they won't look dated exactly. as well, and which that's, I think is I great. I feel like that's been. Yeah, I and love also, that factor. I have a T-shirt with this on, so. Yes. <laughs> very, very, very cool. Oh, and that's worked um, well to have every yeah. pedal has a T-shirt. Yeah. yeah, I think the the marketing around it. I think you know marketing's super important, um, but just like aesthetics and the whole guitar industry do like you don't pick up a guitar because it sounds great. You pick up a guitar right. because it looks cool. It's true. And then you discover that it sounds great or it suits your style or something. Or it might, you know, be terrible to you and you're like, oh, this looks so good, but it can't. Yeah. You know, everyone looks at, like true. peers with their eyes. And um, actually, Mick of That Pedal Show told me that. And ever since... It's true. It's oh, it's just, super true. Yeah, it's the reason. Yeah. Um, and it's the reason why so many pedals, I guess, exist as well. And why, you know, we were talking about Boss, obviously being in Boss. Their whole lineage of their compact pedal is yes. just so iconic because you just... You know what it is mm-hmm. instantly, um, but very cool. So, obviously, these are beautiful pedals. But this has been on my pedal board. Yes. Well, underneath my amp on the floor, and I've been using the VCR, which is the collaboration with Ryan Adams. Mm-hmm. Yep. Tell me more about how it was birthed. Yeah. So <laughs> I've been uh, a lot of us at JHS have like huge, massive, you know kind of like a musical crush on Ryan Adams. He's just a great songwriter. Oh, my and, God, so prolific. Um, and... I remember hearing him way late in his game. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, one of my employees is like a huge fan of his, and then I kind of stumbled into him really late and was like kind of blown away that I went back, I think I went back 10 albums or mm-hmm. something for a relatively young artist. And, yeah, so... Uh, I actually don't remember the point of connection with him, but somewhere along the road, I think I have a, a, a friend out in L.A. that was an artist. They worked with Fender, I believe, and we crossed paths. He had something of ours. You know, it's a small world to some extent. Mm-hmm. And um, Ryan started talking about he had a certain specific sound when you think of some of his earlier records, Definitely, which yeah. was just kind of like a boss type chorus uh, uh, like a hall reverb and he would have a little boost and he'd kind of leave it on it was very much in his words like the sound of the smiths or like the cure it played in that but what's funny is ryan uses that in like a country context so mm-hmm. it creates this strange kind of unique ryan sound um and the idea was you know he's up there singing and playing in a live environment and he's having to like basically tap dance a bit and he doesn't want to use a looping system it's not ryan ryan's Mm -hmm. like you know he's like if he could have like an arcade machine up there that he flicked a button and it changed like something very simple and Mm -hmm. mechanical yeah um so this was like hit the one button and that's the ryan adams preset but then the ability to like one of us you know we're not ryan adams obviously as far as i know uh, flip, <laughs> <laughs> flip the chorus off and you have a reverb or turn yeah. them off and boost and use it as an overdrive so it turned out to be really cool and the graphic concept 
VCR is volume, chorus, reverb. The That's VCR. Kind of cool. yeah. It throws back to Ryan's favorite aesthetic, the very much, you know, kind of the 80s vibe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he, he had a huge part to play in the way it looks. It's the only JHS pedal that strayed from a look. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. yeah. But very, very cool. Yeah. And it's, yeah, I, it really feels um, like I, I would actually only need this and maybe a compressor. That's for real true, yeah. Like, that was so, the idea is a lot of yeah. people, like, yeah, I've seen, I'm like, like your playing too. style and tech. Yeah, you could yeah. get away with a total, playing a gig with that. What other pedals, either by JHS or other pedals that you know, because I love the wealth of knowledge that you are giving out on YouTube just for free. I just I just think some of the videos, you need to go and watch them. I'll link the channel below. Um, if this is the sort of thing that I enjoy, what other pedals would you recommend me? Mm. Mm. So, that's so, a very selfish question. So, no, that's know. a good question. <laughs> so in the, in the context of something very simple that you might get away a whole gig with, is that what you're saying? Or are um, you saying like... Yeah, or maybe some other things that maybe I should start exploring. I know yeah. there's a huge amount that yeah. um, I could. So the... So I'll just throw out the JHS Milkman is a is a slap tape echo boost. Yeah. It's built in the same nature of like for a specific type person that might be all they need. Mm -hmm. Other pedals like that, there's not a lot of pedals that have the functionality of that. But yeah, as far as that sound, I mean, it's kind of you know if you really like this, then. I know this is like the most vague answer ever, but really simple classic things uh, that, you know, a lot of times, I'll go on a philosophical rant, a lot of times we get really, you know, we want the newest and greatest thing. Yeah. But guitar technology, the beauty of everything we love about guitar is basically ancient in the terms of its technology. Yeah. Like the guitars we all love, they're from the 50s. The, exactly. Haven't the pedal much. technology that we tend to, like what you're saying here is you like the simple sounds that are coming from this and the mm -hmm. abilities. That stuff was created in the 60s. So, you know, I would try out things you might not have ever cared to try out. Even like like taking something like an MXR, um, the old one knob boost micro amps mm -hmm. or these are really cheap affordable pedals too because mm -hmm. nobody wants them because they're not cool but they sound awesome uh the solo sound stuff like from here in london like the power booster is really mm -hmm. fun um modulation and verbs like old boss pedals that nobody necessarily wants maybe they're not trendy anymore mm -hmm. some of the old bosses become really trendy mm -hmm. yeah I think on the reverb side too, like a Holy Grail, like the old EHX Holy Grails, yeah, stuff. Yeah. I I think yeah, just more and more, and I sound repetitive sometimes because that's I fully believe that a lot of people need to stop buying brand new things. I say mm -hmm. that to my own detriment, but it, but <laughs> yeah. it's like it's well, like that's interesting. It's it's just the truth though. Like there's a time and place for everything. I mm -hmm. think like even my company, we make certain things that people need. They physically need. It's helping them do something. But a lot of times, like, there's a reason you've seen these things your whole guitar career setting in shops. There's a lot of them. They work. They're consistent. Yeah. They might not be, like, the fanciest and most impressive thing. Mm. But at the end of the day, who cares? If, mm -hmm. if it makes you play guitar better and you're having, you're having fun with your instrument and something's coming out of you, yeah. play a pedal that costs you a dollar. It doesn't matter. Well, yeah. That's incredible. That's my rant. That's, that's, <laughs> no, I think that's yeah. great. And actually, um, for my audience that have uh, followed me for a while, they'll know that one of my pedals that was like the first pedal that made sense to me and like helped me sound good was Turnip Greens, which is the Holy Grail, yeah. um, and, you know, yeah, uh, combination awesome. pedal by Electro Harmonics. But other than one song that I play now that uses a certain setting, the reverse setting, uh, I think this is actually going to replace it on my board. So That's um, cool. So yeah, so thanks for... That's this. awesome. That's then, super cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, but otherwise, thank you so much for being on Tuesday Talks. I love it. I'm glad that we managed to make this happen. We'll do it again. Yeah. I I hear we're both going to LA at a certain time of the year, probably. What would that be for? I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah. Not anyway, sure. We'll see. Um, subscribe to JHS Pedals YouTube channel and subscribe to me too if you haven't already. Um, and yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Thank you guys. Bye. Yeah,